Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? Welcome to another intermediate um, lesson video. Uh, today I want to talk about ghost strokes. Okay. Um, now ghost strokes, uh, I guess they could be kind of difficult to get into, uh, mainly because ghost stroke simply just means playing a really quiet note uh, on your snare drum. Okay, that's that's a ghost stroke. Just playing a really really quiet <laughs> snare drum note. Okay, now that could be a little difficult to get into because probably up until this point, you've pro you you've probably been playing basically one volume on this on on the snare drum and not really worrying about um, multiple heights or anything like that. Um, so if that's the case, then this might be a little bit difficult for you. Um, but otherwise, it's really a pretty um, pretty straightforward concept, I think. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do in this video is hopefully teach you uh, um, just some basic uh, ghost stroke ideas, okay? So the first one is we're gonna start with a, a, a basic groove that that you guys should, that I assume, I assume are all familiar with, okay? Uh, and it's going to go like this. Let me play it for you first. Okay, so that's one of the most commonly played grooves out there, and so I assume uh, at this stage of the game, that uh, a groove like that you can you can play really easily. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that groove. Okay, but now we're going to take all the non two and four notes. Okay, and ghost them. Okay, so the only notes that are going to be accented are your backbeat, which is two and four. But anything other than that, we're going to ghost. Okay, and I'll play that for you so you can hear it. Okay, so hopefully that, that made sense to you. I was playing the exact same beat, just I was taking um, the uh of two, the e of three, and the uh of four, those snare drum notes, and ghosting them, or just playing them really quiet while still accenting uh, counts two and four, which would be your normal backbeat. So that's a good basic way to get, in ghost, uh, to get into ghost strokes because that's, that's a groove pattern that many drummers, beginner, intermediate, advanced, no, at least on some level, okay? And again, uh, I'm just playing something simple on the bass drum, but the bass drum could be anything that, that, that you want. So this is a good starting pattern to, to work on, and I would, I would practice this until you just instinctively play the, those notes as ghosts without having to really think about it. And yes, at the same time, you can accent some of those Go strokes if you prefer, but if you do, you want to be uh, a conscious, intentional decision to accent those notes, not because you know you don't know any better. <laughs> but um, so anyway, that, so that that's a good basic pattern that you can start with. Another little um, ghost variation you could do is is maybe take that uh of four, okay, and instead of just playing it as a single, play it as a drag. Okay, and hopefully you're familiar with the, with the drag uh, rudiment. If you're not, um, check out my uh, 40 rudiments playlist and listen to the drag uh, rudiment. Okay, so if you do that, we're going to take that of four, still going to be ghosted, but we're going to drag it and it'll sound just like this.
Okay, so as you can tell, that drag ad adds a really nice effect to the groove, and I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys are already doing doing that uh, at this point. So that adds a nice effect to it. So uh, just for fun, let's add another go stroke on the E of 1, okay? On the E of 1. All right, I'm going to play that for you real quick. Okay, so as you can see there, I added just another ghost stroke on the E of 1, and then after a while, I started to drag that one as well. So you had um, basically two drags, one on the E of 4 going into the one um, on the E of 1. Okay, so there you go. So, so I would say that's the best pattern right there to start with. Okay, just again, because so many people already know it. So that's a good place to start, okay? Now from here, let's get into some more advanced um, go stroke patterns that, that you can do. Okay, so from here, a good one to, to go to is just to play alternating 16th notes. Okay, uh, obviously a right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the snare drum. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and, uh, okay. But what you're gonna do is also add a backbeat, an accented backbeat on two and four, okay? So if you do that, you'll get one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Okay, so this is a little bit difficult because your left hand is having to do three strokes in a row with the, with the accent being in the middle of the three. Okay, let me, let me play it for you really slow. So you're going to start off like this. Okay, so that's that's another one that's relatively simple to understand, but uh, but maybe hard to execute again because your left hand is playing on all those e's and us, and then also accenting that two and four. So you have a triple stroke on the left hand, but the accent is on the middle note of the three. Okay, so that from a just a, a, a chops standpoint, that can be a little tough. 
especially when you start getting faster. So your hand technique is really going to dictate how well you do this. Okay, not to mention coordination-wise, the ability to play different bass drum patterns underneath um, will also present a challenge when your left hand starts to play this much because for some of you, up until this point, your left hand probably doesn't do that much other than just play on two and four. Um, I mean, maybe you haven't really gotten into uh, using the left hand on all these alternate uh, subdivisions that much. Um, so if that's the case, this, this one can definitely be very challenging, so just take it slow, okay? All right, so, and then with that one, you can also add, take some of those single notes and add drags over top of them, just like we did with the first pattern. All right, so the drags can always be substituted uh, in place of a regular single ghost stroke, okay? All right, so let's go into another pattern. Now, this pattern here, I would say uh, the... Intermediate advanced ideas is probably the most common, okay? Um, and uh, there's also a variation to this as well, which I'll go over. But uh, let, let me play this one for you real quick. I'll do it without the bass drum. I'll just do it with the hi-hat and snare, right? Let's check this out. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. That's man, that's that's really tough to play just slow. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've I've really tried to play this that slow uh, in in a while. But um, hopefully you got the idea. And again, I would practice all this stuff really slow. Playing at slow tempos is extremely difficult. Okay, a lot of music is slow, so you want to practice slowly for that reason, of course. But also playing slow requires a lot of control. Okay, so. With these, with these ghost strokes or anything that you might be working on, practicing slow is a good idea, okay? So again, that's the pattern, okay? That's the pattern, um, and I would definitely get that down first, okay? The, the only tricky part there is you have an accent, your backbeat, and then you have a ghost stroke immediately after that accent, right? So you're going accent, <laughs> soft note. Okay, so that, that can be a little difficult to do. Uh, that's going to definitely take some control in your left hand, but just uh, just be, be, be watchful of that, okay? Uh, and again, another thing you can do is you can add a drag into this, okay? So I'll just show you a quick example of uh, an idea that I like to do, uh, adding the drag to this pattern, okay? I'll play it really slow as well. Okay, so there I just added uh, a little drag on the uh, 
on the uh, two e n on the uh of um one e n two e n other on the uh of two and the uh of four that um, that ghost stroke I just dragged it okay uh so again yeah drags can be used again with with any with any with any of the notes so definitely experiment okay and I even improvised a little bit and I added the um the pattern we did before this one. I mixed that even into what I was playing a little bit. Okay, so all this stuff ultimately can be mixed. Okay, and uh, so experiment with that. Another variation um, that's similar to this that you can do um, sounds like this. Let me uh, let me play it for you real quick. Okay, so on that one you got the one E and two and the three E and four and the one E and two E and the three E and four and the one E and two E and the three E and four da 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 ga da 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 ga. Okay, so uh, so there you go. That's another really really good pattern. Okay, um, so I would say that those are probably some of the the most common. Again, I would take all these and and mix them and improvise with them as you see fit, okay? Um, so uh, so there you go. I mean, that really kind of, uh, I think, covers the, the basic uh, main ones that, um, that I use, for sure. Um, another way, though, that I wanna, uh, I wanna wrap this video up with, another way that you can use ghost strokes is instead of using a specific pattern, um, Mix them in between your bass drum notes. Okay, now this this really works well if you're playing a groove where the bass drum is busy, okay, or or, or busier. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just make up an example. Let's let's start off with a groove where, where the bass drum is on one and the of one. Okay, where the bass drum's going one e and a two e and the three e and a four e and the one e and a two e and the three e and a four e and the so an example of this concept is I'll put two ghost strokes in between the count one and the uh, right? as well as in between count three and the uh. All right? And that will sound just like this. Check this out. Okay, so there you go. So all, all I did was put um, two ghost strokes on the E and AND of one and the E and AND of three in between those two bass drum notes, okay? So now let's add a bass drum on the E of two and the E of four, okay? So now our bass drum is going one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Okay, so I'm gonna play that with the um, existing ghost strokes that we have. All right, check this out.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two ghost strokes, okay, on the and and uh of two and the and and uh of four, again, to fill out the space. So, so you're basically thinking of the ghost strokes and the bass drum in a more linear fashion, where instead of the bass drum and ghost strokes uh, hitting on certain notes together or certain spots together, they're playing a linear fashion where, where they're each on their own spot and they never overlap. Okay, so let's, let's try that and I'll play it really slow for you. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Again, I'm just I'm just weaving um, the bass drum and the ghost strokes uh, into a, a continuous sixteenth note pattern, where they're not playing at all together. Okay, it's either bass drum or a ghost stroke. Okay, so that's another way that you can approach ghost strokes is just to take your existing groove. Okay, whatever it might be with the bass drum, hi hat and snare. And fill in the holes, fill in the subdivisions with ghost strokes, whatever they might be. Okay? Um, let me think here. But uh, yeah, so that's that's um, that's a really good way to, to go about it. All right, I, was, I, was I was trying to think of a, another pattern that um, I could show you here real quick, but um, uh, one's not coming to mind. But um, anyway, hopefully that made sense. And, and that's ghost strokes. Okay? Um, you can do a lot of cool things. With them, uh, really, the only thing you're trying to do is just to make sure that they're really quiet. I mean, you've probably heard this term that you know you, ghost strokes should be felt more than heard, heard, and that's basically correct. I mean, they're again they're they're used to kind of fill in some of the holes of your groove and sort of and and sort of you know help the groove move a little bit and have some more like momentum. Okay. And you don't necessarily need to fill in all the holes, okay? So let me also say that. Again, you, know, you have to kind of make a musical decision on what you think the groove needs or doesn't. Because sometimes it's not about what you play, it's about what you don't play. And I would say maybe that's the case more often than the other way. Okay? So anyway, um, that's Ghost Strokes. Okay? So um, take your time with them and enjoy them. And I hope this video was helpful. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. See ya.